Hello everyone, Mel here, Stocksbridge Guitar Tech. Welcome back to the channel, or if this is your first time here, welcome. So I've got a very quick video today for you. I've had a subscriber, John Nielsen, so this one's for you, John. He asked me, I did a setup quite a while back on a, a Telecaster, and he's, he was a bit confused what I meant by setting the uh, strings and the bridge to the same radius as the neck so I'm going to try and explain that a little bit better for him today so when you get a guitar the fretboard isn't perfectly flat and level like that it's actually got a bit of a curve on it so if we imagine this compact disc this is a very extreme example was our fretboard from there to there say we've got that curve there so when we set in the string height for the action at the 17th fret which is where I do it on Fender type guitars, strats and tellies we need to match that curve with the string so if you can imagine this is my high E string this is the top of my fret so I've got a gap like that between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret so let's say that gap is four sixty fourths of an inch which is a, a fairly standard fender measurement so I've got four sixty fourths of an inch there but if I just set those strings flat I'm going to run into the top of the fret so my inner strings the D and the G are going to be touching the top of the fret or almost touching the top of the fret and when you pluck them they're going to hit that fret and it's going to cause rattling buzzing that kind of things so we need to keep that 4 fourths all the way across the six strings so that we've got that same gap and it's following that curve of the fretboard that's what we mean now it doesn't have to be and they don't all have to be exactly 464 you may want the high E string a bit lower you may want the low E string the thicker string a little bit higher because that vibrates more and you don't want it crashing into the top of the fret so it's a bit of experimentation there but as a general rule of thumb if you use that as a starting point and you set them all up to that same gap between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret if you make sure that gap is uniform across all six strings that's what I'm talking about when I say keep it the same same radius as the fretboard so how we would do this how I go about doing this I put a capo on the first fret very important don't do it without the capo on which I think is what John was doing so you put the capo on the first fret or if you don't have a capo you can just do each individual string but make sure that you're holding it, it down at the first fret while you're measuring and we just take a steel rule we go to the I use the 17th fret where this joins the body and I will just measure from the top of the fret I will measure to the bottom of the string and that is about exactly one sixteenth of an inch I know it is because I've set the guitar up I can't see that without my glasses but I do know that that is about four sixty fourths of an inch or one sixteenth if you prefer yeah so that's what I'm looking for there and then I do the same on every other string I'd measure the A string D string G B and E make sure they were all four sixty fourths or something like that 
so that's that's one way you can do it you can also use a little tool like this one you can get these off Amazon or eBay very cheap tool it's got certain different types of measurements on it but these black blocks that you can see along the edge those are for measuring your string heights now on this particular one it doesn't do 60 fourths and 30 seconds they're actually in thousandths of an inch or millimeters so four sixty fourths as thousandths of an inch is about 0 0.60 which this has on at the bottom in the middle there it says 0 0.60 so I could use that instead of my ruler I place that behind the string at the 17th fret until I can match up the bottom of the string with the top of one of these blocks and again that's about bang on 0 0.060 uh, I could also use millimeters if I wanted to that would be about one and a half millimeters approximately so let's try that again this is it somewhere in the, it's, it's there one and a half millimeters so that should just not nicely line up with the bottom of the string when I place that on the 17th fret which it does so we can use that rather than the ruler we could also use feeler gauges same thing these again are in thousandths of an inch so I, I would take these and I would I would keep measuring until I got what I wanted so I want that to just slide nicely under there without pushing the string up and once once I'm happy with that that's it if it's pushing the string up that means the actions too low that means I want to raise this saddle up to bring the string up a little bit until that just slides under there nicely and I've got that correct gap if it's too high if it slides under and there's still a gap between the top of the feeler gauge and the bottom of the string then I would lower that saddle I would bring it down until it's just about touching the top of that feeler gauge so that's another way we could do it but by far the easiest way of setting this radius is to use one of these so this is called a radius gauge and you can get these in wood or in metal and they are pre-cut radiuses you get them in different sizes so this one's a 12 inch radius so that would be more like a Gibson Les Paul or Gibson SG this is a nine and a half inch radius which is typical modern Fender I happen to know that this guitar has a nine and a half inch radius but if I didn't know and I was trying to find out the way we do that we slide this underneath the string so we put that in there like that twist it and then pull it up onto the frets stand it up like that and then we would eyeball that by looking at a, a light source look up at that I can't see any gap under there so I know that's correct if there was a gap if I could see light under that radius gauge then I know it's it, it's too curved and, and it's wrong or if there's gaps on the edges I know that's wrong with so I try a different gauge but I know that that is correct for this guitar that's a nine and a half inch radius so then what we do so we now know this fretboard is a nine and a half inch radius and now all we do we do the same thing we slide that under the strings but now we take it down to the bridge we pull it up against the strings and then we just look down and eyeball it 
and those saddles should just line up nicely with that curve again they don't have to be exact but they want to be in the ballpark I don't know if you'll be able to see that but hopefully you can see that that's a pretty good match and so I know that my strings and my bridge have got the same radius so that's what I was talking about when I'm talking about matching your string radius to your fretboard radius it means if your fretboard goes like that the strings want to follow it so the gap wants to be pretty much the same across all six strings like I said you will probably find that you want the high E string a little bit lower and you want the low E string maybe a little bit higher because you want low action on this because you're playing lead guitar and bending and on here you want it a little bit higher just so that it doesn't hit the top of the frets when you pluck it really hard otherwise it's gonna rattle like crazy so that's that's all I'm talking about when I'm talking about radius of the strings make sure that you measure them so they're all the same height above the fret the top fret I use the 17th fret some people use the 15th some people use the 12th fret I like to use the fret where the body joins the neck which in this case on this telly is right there on the 17th fret but very important to remember press down at the first fret before you take the measurement the easiest way to do that is to just put a capo on that first fret while you're doing that measurement and then hopefully once you've got the action set just exactly where you want it and all the strings lining up nicely things like chords should feel much nicer to play uh, and also the guitar in general should just feel much nicer to play because it's set correctly so that's basically the video for today so that was for John I hope I made a, a better job of explaining that to you John uh, any question any questions at all just get back to me but that's the video for today guys I told you it was going to be a quick one this uh, I'll be back next week with another one for you until then take care remember to subscribe to the channel if you do get anything out of my videos if you do subscribe click that little bell notification and I'll see you next week bye for now